Hi there, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In today's video we'll continue with our emergency medication series. We'll be reviewing Amiodarone. Amiodarone, also known as Amio, is a class 3 antiarrhythmic. So let's jump straight in. Here we go. Amiodarone was first made in 1961 and came into medical use in 62 for chest pain believed to be related to the heart. It was pulled from the market in 67 due to its side effects. In 74, it was found to be useful for the management of arrhythmias and was reintroduced. Amiodarone, also known in the ICU or the ED environment as Amio. Some common names for Amio is Corderone and Pacerone. I personally like to call it the Big A. In this video, we'll review Amio's mechanism of action, indication, dosages for adult and pediatric resuscitation, and review some of its common side effects. Amiodarone is a complex drug and known as a class 3 antiarrhythmic with effects on sodium, potassium and calcium channels, as well as alpha and beta adrenergic blocking properties. Patients must be hospitalized while the loading dose of amiodarone are administered. Amiodarone should be prescribed only by clinicians who are experienced in the treatment of life-threatening arrhythmias and are thoroughly familiar with amiodarone's risk and benefits and have access to laboratory facilities capable of adequately monitoring the effectiveness and side effects of amiodarone treatment. Amiodarone lowers the defibrillation threshold, making defibrillation more effective at lower energy settings. The indication of amiodarone includes VF or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, unresponsive to CPR, defibrillation and an epinephrine, recurrent hemodynamically unstable ventricular tachycardia, and also may be used for the treatment of some atrial and ventricular arrhythmias, but with the support of expert consultation. In cardiac arrest, the first dose is 300 mg IV push, followed by a D5 water flush. The second dose, if needed, is 150 mg IV push. The pattern followed by clinicians in VF or pulseless VT is usually high quality CPR. Defibrillate number one, defibrillate number two, give epinephrine. Defibrillate three, provide amiodarone. Defibrillate number four, give epi. Defibrillate number five, amiodarone, and then defibrillate number six, epinephrine again. I always remember that after the equal number of shocks, shock two, four, six, the patient will receive an epi, and after uneven number of shocks, shock three and five, the patient will receive amiodarone, all assuming that the rhythm did not change at any time to something else. If this pattern is followed, your patient will receive one dose of epinephrine every four minutes and one dose of amiodarone every four minutes. Usual dose interval for both medications are every three to five minutes as per the American Heart Association guidelines. It should be noted that amiodarone doses could be replaced with lidocaine as an alternative. We will discuss lidocaine in a future video in the emergency medication series. So let's look at the ACLS dosage. For life-threatening arrhythmias, we may administer amiodarone as follows as a rapid infusion where we can give 150 milligrams over 10 minutes, which is 15 milligrams per minute. We may repeat this dose as needed. We can then also give a slow infusion, 360 milligrams over six hours, which works out to one milligram 
per minute. We can also do a maintenance infusion of 540 milligrams over 18 hours, which works out to 0 0.5 milligrams per minute. The maximum cumulative dose in 24 hours is 2.2 gram. So let's look at the pulse dosage. For refractory VF or pulsed as VT, we can give 5 milligrams per kilogram IV. We can repeat the 5 milligrams per kilogram bolus up to a total dose of 15 milligrams per kilogram. Keep in mind that we cannot exceed the 2.2 grams in adolescents in 24 hours. The maximum single dose in pediatric resuscitation is 300 milligrams. For poor perfusing supraventricular and ventricular arrhythmias, the loading dose is 5 milligrams per kilogram IV, and that should be given over 20 to 60 minutes. For pediatric patients in VF or pulses VT, we can follow the same sequence as shown on the previous slide. So what is the side effects of amiodarone? Rapid infusion may lead to hypotension with prolonged usage. Total doses exceeding 2.2 grams over 24 hours was shown to cause significant hypotension in clinical trials. We should not administer with other drugs that prolong QT intervals, for example, procanamide. And amiodarone has a very long terminal elimination and the half-life lasts up to 40 days. If you benefited from this video, kindly like, subscribe and smash that notification bell. Please leave a comment below because it really helps out our channel. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video.